Welcome, everybody. We're going to uh, read Parashat Tzav, uh, possibly a little something else later on um, throughout today's uh, this throughout this lesson. If you want to draw on the screen or raise your hand to read or ask a question, here's how you do it. Uh, who would like to get started? Who wants to read first? Teeny tiny verse. I can do. <laughs> Thomas, get us started. Okay. <clears throat> um. Vaidaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor. Very, very short. Vaidaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor. Um, not too much here to talk about, is it? Is there? It's very good. Straightforward, pretty clear cut, right? Yeah. Um, all right. What binyan is this? Vaidaber. Vayik told us the form. Yeah. What binyan is it? Uh, uh he. The seven. He. It's a PL. So it's usually oh, some sort of a, yes. okay, PL. Okay, right. so, yeah. Usually some sort of an intensive or intense or intentional action. Uh here the difference between saying and speaking might be someone running their mouth versus someone giving a presentation. Uh, or, or, um, uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the verb is for eloquent. Uh, anyway, uh, being particularly eloquent or something. So, anyway, Vaidaber Adonai, and we know it's a PL because of the Shva, the Patach, and the Strong Dagesh. Uh, Lord's name is right there, El Moshe. What is that? Um, Hmm. Well, we know what it is. Mapik. It's not a mapik. Mapik only shows up in hay. Uh, the job of a mapik is to tell us that a letter hay is not a vowel, but instead is a consonant. Uh, not vowel, but instead consonant. Um. So that leaves us with uh, pretty much one other option, right? A dagesh. It has to be a dagesh. Mm -hmm. Now, what's weird about a dagesh showing up at the front of a word? Mm. Usually they don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it, a dagesh lene? it can't be a dagesh lene because a dagesh lene, a weak dagesh, can only show up in six letters. Uh, what are the six letters that a weak dagesh can show oh, up in? We got the part. Uh, which I think uh, Latin is Lene, weak is English, and then uh, Chalash is the Hebrew. A weak Dagesh only shows up in six letters. Begad Kefat. And because the Lamed is not one of those, means it can't be that one either. Hmm. So what does that mean it has to be? A strong Dagesh. And what do strong Dagesh dots tell us? Same thing. Same thing. Doubled. Yes. It's doubled. It's doubled. And then we have to ask the follow up question why is it doubled? Is it because it's part of the pattern of the word or because something went missing? Something went missing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to have a dagesh at the front of a word as part of its pattern. So something must have gone missing. What went missing? Mm, a yod. A yod. <clears throat> A yod. What we're looking at in Moshe's name is a segol hey, which is a vowel. This is not a consonant. Mm -hmm. Pretend it's not there. Remember that vowels weren't added to the text until the time of Solomon. That's when we get mater lectionis mm -hmm. letters. And then later, the Masoretic scribes put the dots in there. So originally, Moshe's name was either memshin yod or just memshin. But the root is Memshin Yod, and we know this because of when uh, Potiphar's daughter names him. She says, I'm going to name him Moshe because... Anybody remember? She, she knew him out of the water. Out of the water. water. My... Meshitihu is the oh. verb. The who is referring to him. That's our 3MS suffix, The more like the original 3MS suffix. 
T is our Katal suffix. I did it. What did I do? Memshin I Yod. Him out of the water. There's your root. I drew him Memshin Yod. Moses' name comes from Memshin Yod. So why don't we get to see the Yod in his name? Human yes. laziness. <laughs> uh, it's too hard to say Moshai. Or Mosh. It's it was probably originally uh okay, it was probably originally Moshi, which is very hard to say. Uh turns into Moshe, which is still kind of hard to say, which turns into Moshe. And the Yod just drops off because it's too hard to say Moshe Yi. Nevertheless, the Yod that would have been pronounced there mm -hmm. yet wasn't written down. Is assumed into is is assimilated into the following Lamed. There's a strong digest here because of the missing Yod in Moshe's name. Fun stuff. This will happen a lot with Lamed Yod verbs, verbs whose third root letter is a Yod, and yet we don't get to see the Yod. All we see is a vowel at the end. Keep an eye out. See if you ever find a strong digest <clears throat> following a verb like that. It happens more than you think. <laughs> All right, nothing to talk about in this verse. Who wants to read yeah. the next verse? I'll it's try it. All right, so Amanda's next, and then Jesse, and then who was the third person? I have a little question. Oh, Thomas, you have a question. Okay, uh, the the Israelites um, write a Dargish. Uh, the reason is that uh, they forgot this rule. Uh, so that they don't forget this rule, or why they write okay. this guy? Why? Oh, is good. That takes us. That takes us into an excellent uh, discussion topic here. Um, yeah. When we think of a strong dagesh, we don't really think of a pronunciation difference because it doesn't happen today. Uh, we don't say vaidabel. We don't hang out on this or or say it twice. Nevertheless, historically, it probably was. It was probably hung out on a little bit longer. You're lengthening the consonant with yeah, that. Yeah. Likewise, this also would have had a an audible difference. Uh, Excuse me. You would have hung out on it for a second. So the Masoretic scribes, when they're putting in all the dots and vowels, what, the, what they're doing is they're passing on to us their trans, their uh, trans transferring they're um they're giving us the tradition that they received from before and mm -hmm. they were taught to pronounce this as moshe lemor hanging out on that lamed so they put a dot in it for us they weren't be they weren't trying to invent anything new i use that word anything loosely they weren't trying to invent anything new they were simply trying to pass on the tradition that they received in fact masoretic comes from the word masora which means tradition something passed on masar mm -hmm. uh, like if i want to say lim soldash i say would you pass on my greetings to someone masal he he passed on uh or de delivered or I don't know. Try, uh, the English word is failing me. Okay. Uh, did somebody else have a question on this, or can we move on to the next one? All right, Amanda, you're next, and then Jesse, and then Lauren. Uh, so this is for Amanda. Please go right ahead. Tzav et aharon ve'et banav lemor zot torat ha'ola he ha ola al mok ra al hamiz beach kol halai halala ad ha boker veesh hamiz beach toked bo. Uh, very good reading. Very, very, very good reading. I have two things to nitpick. Could you reread that one? Mokeda, uh, the font. Mo Mokeda. 
Okay, good. So we have a Dalit there, and that's a, that's one of the things I was trying to point out. Uh, the other, by by underlining the Shva and pointing out that it's actually an audible Shva instead of a silent one. Instead no of Rok, it, Good. Now you're putting stress on it. Be sure never to put the stress on a reduced vowel like a Shva. It's Mokada. Okay. Mokada. Mokada. When I go to split this into syllables, I would split it right there. Mokada. And that Shva at the beginning of the syllable signifies that it's audible. Um, okay. How do we know it's an audible schwa? It looks exactly like a silent schwa. It's because of the preceding long vowel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So mo and then last one, the the vowels here need a little adjusting. What is this? Tukad. Tukad. Very good. Tukad. And let me read through one time, and then we'll see what we can see what we can find in this verse to talk about. Of <laughs> et aharon. Ve'et banav lemor, zot torat haola, hi haola al mokda al hamizbeach ol halayla ad haboker, ve'esh hamizbeach tukad bo. All right, I don't have to translate this for you. That kind of the point of the interlinear uh if there's a question about a particular word you know its translation is right there beneath it um so if anyone sees a word that they're confused about or have a question on blurt it out there are some people who have their hands up because they're going to be reading so just blurt it out hey i have a question and what's this word right here come from if we had to parse this verb Newsflash or spoiler alert, it is a verb. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's actually tziva. Tziva. Um, well, excuse me. The root is tsari vav yod. I'll just write the root out like this. If we were going to look it up in a dictionary, we would have to look under tsari vav hey, but the hey is actually a vowel, so it's technically tsari vav yod, and we don't get to see that weak yod kind of like in moshe's name the yod went missing so also this um in the lexical form the three ms katal it would be tziva he commanded hmm. and that theoric with the strong dagesh points to a pl so what form is this if that's a katal um, what's this well, it says it's right there. It's a command form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the word means command, but it is a command form. This is the imperative form. Tzav. Um, it probably should have been tzave, right? If we look at how do how how do you create an imperative in Hebrew? Well, you take the yiktol second person form and you lop off the tav. And uh, so the second person yikto form should be te tsa ve. Like that, with a weak dagesh in the tav. Te tsa ve. And if we want to turn it into an imperative, lop off the tav and we're left with tsa ve, which is what we. <gasps> Wait. It's different. It's like an apocopated form or something. Or maybe the Masoretic scribes just forgot to put the vowel on there. Okay, so tzave, what we would have expected. Tzav is what we get, and we're just going to be happy with our happy meal. And so tzav, command, do it. Command whom? Et aharon, direct object marker. Oh, and also ve'et banav. Lemor, infinitive, construct. Zot torat ha'ola. Why is there a tav at the end of this? Um, it's a construct chain. What does that mean? The law. Uh, is that the law of the burnt offering? Uh, burnt offering. To, right. To yeah, there's. It's in a yeah. construct chain, which means it's connected to the next word with an of relationship. It's the law it's of feminine. Um, it is feminine. feminine That's that yes. feminine tav is making a comeback. 
when we think of the word Torah, we don't usually think of the Tav being at the end when in fact it originally was. The word Torah used to be Torah. And T at the end of the word went silent, much like French and Greek. So Torah becomes Torah. But with that Tav at the end, what's the construct going to do? Long vowels go short. But exactly. Turns into a patach. Voila. That's your construct form. Torah with the original feminine Tav. And that means Ha'ola should have probably also been originally Olat. But we're lazy and we lopped it off. Um. I wish I had more information on why he is sometimes spelled with a vav. Uh, vavs, and, uh, vavs and yods in Hebrew go back and forth a lot. So that's all I'm going to chalk it up to. It happens about 50 times in the Torah, and that's it. That okay. Spelled with a vav. Uh, but we know it has to be he instead of who, as we're talking about the ola, which is feminine. Context says it has to be he. Um, okay, any questions on this before we move on to the next reader? Next reader was Jesse. <clears throat> will be Jesse. Vela Vash Ha Kohen Mido Vad Umich. Nese Vad Yilbash Al Besaro Veherim Et Hadeshen Asher Tohal Haesh Et Haola Al Hamizbeach Ve Samo e tsel hamiz beach. Very good. Ve lavash ha kohen midovad u mechnasevad yilbash al besaro. Ve herim et hadeshen asher tochal ha esh et ha ola al hamiz beach. Ve samo e tsel hamiz beach. Um what form is this verb? Vekatal. Vekatal. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's being translated as, as a future tense. Lavash to wear clothing. Velavash he shall wear, he shall put on. Hakohen, the priest. Midovad. Um what's the root of Mido? You had to guess. Uh, Mem Ayn Delet. Other grammar for me, dude. I don't know. We have a doubling Dagesh. So either. Oh, 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 Dele Dele. Mem Dalit Dalit. Right. So this tells us that some letter is doubled, or that Dalit is doubled for some reason, either because the Dalit is being doubled or because there's a missing noon. It could be, yeah, I guess it could be either one. This one is Madad. <clears throat> Madad has to do with uh, measuring. So Mido literally, mean, literally means something more like his measure. It like perfectly suited for him or something like that. I'm not talking about some guy coming in and measuring you for a suit, but rather it is his own. It is suited for him. It's his size, something like that. Um, so this is going to be like his own garment as opposed to borrowing someone else's garment, like at the temple complex. So um, what? does not mean his garment. Question. What is the difference? In this word in simla, which is garment covering. I mean, this the priest is putting on his garment. Is this so the uh the the first point I was trying to make is that mido does not mean garment. 
Oh, okay. Mido means something measured to his size. It's his own. Vad is the word for a linen garment. So honestly, this word garment should have been shoved over here. Linen garment. Um, a simla, the difference, be, uh, a simla is what's worn on the outside. And it's, it's a little funny to a modern Hebrew speaker because in modern Hebrew, a simla is a woman's dress. But in the oh. biblical Hebrew, anyone can wear a simla, and it's usually something uh, glorious. So a king wears a simla. Uh, even in Isaiah, God wears a simla uh, mm. because it's this beautiful garment that fills the heavenly court, uh, even though in modern Hebrew it's changed meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be something gorgeous worn on the outside uh whereas vad is just a linen garment of some kind has more to do with what it's made out of rather than where it's worn mm -hmm. there's also uh other words like uh, uh oh come on now that i'm trying to remember it uh uh katonit there we go katonit does anybody has anyone ever heard of a katonet? I excuse me. Everybody here has heard of a katonet, but do you know what it is? I'm trying to remember if it's katonet. It might be katonet instead of katonet. Uh, katonet. Oh, make a guess. What famous garment is there in the Bible? Jesus's garment. Fair enough. No. How about Hebrew Bible? Mm. Well, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph's oh. garment is called a katonet, uh, oh. katonet pasim. Now, pasim is a little bit hard to understand in the biblical context, but it probably is related to the modern Hebrew word, striped. Uh, so coat of many colors is not necessarily a good translation, striped. Garment is a better translation, or we could just say some sort of um, special, expensive, nice-looking garment, uh, not knowing exactly what Pasim originally meant. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, I think that'll that'll suffice for now. And umich nasevad. Now this is kind of this is kind of funny to me, but. Uh, in modern Hebrew, michnasayim means pants. It's related to this. Uh, michnasay is construct, plural, because of the tzere yod. And the word michnasayim, I'll just kind of overlay it right here. Sayim. With that ayim at the end means it's dual. All right. Uh, Hebrew has a singular, a plural, and a dual, something that's only two. So michnasayim are the things that have, it's something that has two of them. What's the root of michnasayim? Uh, nun, samek. samek. What are some other words that we know from this root? Wing, kanaf, or this. Kanaf, that's kanaf. Enough is a wing. What about a bait Knesset? Mm -hmm. Does anyone know what bait Knesset is? Because the there's house a of the Knesset. Oh, yeah. It's a house of what? The Knesset. I think I got that wrong. Yeah, it's, a, it's a house of, okay, so there are two different definitions. Um, it's basically, uh, Knesset is a convening, a coming together. Uh, yeah. So, lehikanes uh, is the nifal verb to enter somewhere. Nichnasti, uh, I entered. Um, a Beit Knesset is a house of entering. Okay. In a secular sense, we could have like the Beit Knesset, which is the uh, the legislature in Israel, and then in the religious sense, a uh, Beit Knesset is a synagogue. It's the Hebrew word for a synagogue, Beit Knesset. Uh, Knisa is either 
well. Knisa is either the action of entering. Uh, knis, knis, knisia, uh, oh gosh. No, it's Knisa. I think Knisa is also the word for a church. So it's the same root, but different religion. Um, here, the idea of entering, michnasayim, entering two things. It's your pants. You enter two legs into your pants. <laughs> that's, why that's why it's funny to me. But uh, here we get michnase being translated as the undergarment, something underneath that overgarment. And so it enters in below the overgarment, something like that. Uh, yilbash, that's the yiktol form of lavash. Why is there a patach? Because um, there's something missing. Because there's something, something is awry. Something is amok. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, what were you saying? What's the reason? I was saying something is missing, a letter is missing. No, no, that's strong degesh. When you have strong degesh, something is double okay. missing. This is a weak degesh. Uh, but what about the patach? Usually in Yikto, we expect an O vowel, like yishmor. But here it's yilbash. Do we have any other verbs that have an a ah vowel in the yikto? Uh, yes, yikto and yikto. And, uh, right, well, yikto isn't an actual word. It just represents all those verbs that have an a ah vowel. I'm wondering if you guys can think of some examples of that yikto form um, I, have one, but I think it's modern it's all right uh is it yilmad could be yilmad mm -hmm. that's one we can come up with a hundred of these come on yilmad is one mm -hmm. yishma is one mm -hmm. Mm. Yigdal is one. Mm. Yikrav is another. All right, I'm running out of room, I think. Pretend there's a shva there. And Yiftach. Which one? But Yiftach. Yiftach. All right, let's let's start with this right here. Let's start with this right here. Okay, so I've created two groups here, whether you realize it or not. And um, sounds like a little bit of feedback. I wonder, might have to, might have to mute. Yeah. Okay, I think it's from your mic. There are two groups that I'm making here. Mm -hmm. Yishma and Yiftach. To this, we could add. Uh, we could add. Uh, let me think of another example. Ah, Yilchav. I'm not, it's not yir, yir, Yilchav with a Kaf, but rather Yilchav with a Chet. I'm doing that on, pers on purpose. Uh, if we get a, a guttural in either position, two or three of the root, then the Yiktol becomes Yiktal. Mm -hmm. So this is second or third guttural root letter. There's a Chet. There's an ayin, there's mm -hmm. a chet. Or how about yikra? It's a little bit of a special case. Uh, yikra has an aleph at the end, but instead of getting a patach, it gets a full-fledged long vowel kamatz. Why? At the end of a syllable, aleph quiesces. It's like there's no letter there, so we need a long vowel. Mm -hmm. But it's still a yiktal form. Over here, these do not have gutturals. Something else is going on. And to this, we could add yilbash. These are, or historically were, state of being verbs, state of verbs. Mm. Look at me, I'm wearing a shirt. Look, I'm, 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 move, I'm doing an action of wearing it. No, I'm not. I'm just wearing. There is no movement involved. I simply have the shirt on. I'm not... Uh, having to act out a verb in order to yilbash, I'm just doing it. It is. It's like I'm a state of being. Look, I'm clothed. Uh, something like that. So maybe yilbash isn't seen as a state of verb 
uh, it later on in the Bible, same story with Yilmad, but I think originally they were. Uh, Yigdal and Yikrav are examples of full-fledged stative verbs. He will be great, Yigdal. He will be near, Yikrav. In English, stative verbs are those that you include the verb to be. I am tired. I am hungry. I am thirsty. I am near. I am lacking. Uh, I am ashamed. All of those are state of being verbs. And in Hebrew, they are state of verbs. In the yiktol, you would expect an a vowel. Um, all right. Al basaro, uh, upon his basar flesh, veherim. What is the root of veherim? Um, what is it? Uh, Harim? Uh, I don't know. It's not mountains, so I don't know. Right, exactly. We have a hey, it, it looks exactly like the word mountains. It's just it doesn't fit the context. And because of the direct object marker here, we would imagine that this is this has to be a verb. So what verb is spelled like mountains? Veherim uh, is from the root rum, which is to be high up, to be mm -hmm. a position. Herim, then, is going to be the he feel causative of that root, to cause to be high up, that is, to lift something up. Uh, what will he cause to be high up, lifted up? Et hadashis, the ashes. A share introduces a relative clause, tells us more about the deshin. A share, tochal ha'esh. Um, trying to remember... It's addition. Et uh, no, I guess it would have to be here, all the way to here. Yeah. Uh, tochal esh tochal. What does that mean? Oh, he ate. He consumed. Oh. He? Uh, oh no. I know. Not he. Uh, all right, first off, is it, is, a or is it a katal or a yiktol? Yiktol. So yiktol. Tav tells us that the subject is either two options. Uh, Tav at the front, you have two you. options. It's either you a man you or me. she. She. Right. So did Aaron eat the ashes? No, it's the fire that will consume it. The the fire irregular feminine ver uh, feminine noun right here, mm -hmm. uh, feminine singular noun. She is the subject, so she either will consume or will have consumed something like that. Here they translate it as a perfect tense, uh, mm -hmm. even though maybe it should be a future perfect. Anyway, it's a yiktol that she will or will have consumed. The fire that is et haola. Uh, this is probably with. This is probably with the ola, or when she consumed the ola, and therefore it's a direct object. Al uh, hamizbeach on the place of zevach slaughter, so slaughter place altar. Vesamo. What's the root? Sim. Sim. There. Sim. 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 Yeah, it's not sham there. It's sim, sim. to put or place. Uh, mm -hmm. The yod is missing here. It is a weak root. When you get yods and vavs in the middle of the root, sometimes they go missing. Here it's in the katal, or rather vekatal form. So yod's missing. Vesamo, and he put, or and he shall put, o refers back to what? Them. them, they, them. I see the word them, but this means they, so means him. So, what's them. it referring to? Ah. Hmm. He, him, he. It is. Who's the he? Who's the him? Uh, whoever is going Aaron. to put on the thing. No, 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 no. Okay. The, the Aaron's the Aaron. one doing the verb, okay. he's the subject of the verb, and he shall put. So, Aaron is the he right here. I'm wondering who is or, or what, who or what is the thing that he is seeming, that he is some 
that he is. Is the putting... burnt offering? Yeah, the, the ashes. Isn't that the burnt offering? The, the ashes. The burnt offering? Okay, why does it have to be the ashes and it can't be the burnt offering? Because the burnt because... offering is feminine. Because the burnt offering is feminine and the ashes are masculine. So when it says, and he put, oh, it has to refer to something masculine singular. And as we go back, Mizbeach doesn't make sense. That's what he's going to be putting it on. Uh, Ola is feminine. Esh is feminine. Uh, Deshen, ah, Deshen is masculine. Uh, so it's it could be the Deshen. In fact, that fits the context. Uh, etzel, he shall put it, the ashes. Uh, etzel, near, on the side of, beside, Hamizbeach. Okay, questions? Uh, Lauren, would you like to read? Uh, no, you're not Lauren. You're um, uh, still, Yolanda. That's my granddaughter. They Yolanda. use my computer. Both of them. And whenever I come to use it, it's got their names. And I don't know squat about that. Okay. That's well, so then sorry. forgive me if I call you by your granddaughter's name by accident. Just Yolanda. call me Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like me. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. All right. Would you like to read? Ufashat et... Begadav Velavash Begadim Aherim Vehotsi et Hadeshen Hadeshen El Mihuts Lamahane El Makom Perfect reading. Very well done. Ufashat et begadav belavash begadim acherim vehotzi et hadeshen el michutz lamachane el makom tahor. All right. What form is that? Vekatal. Vekatal. Pashat. Does it always always mean to take off, to to put off? What's the meaning of pashut? Simple, straightforward. Has anyone ever heard of the pashat? Mm -hmm. What is the pashat? Some sort of feast or celebration, holiday. No. no. It has to do with this. Simple. It's the uh, Peshat is the straightforward um, literal under uh, interpretation of a text. Mm. Um, I, I wonder, wasn't it last week that I mentioned the four? Yes. Mm-hmm. Four modes of interpretation. Okay, so watch last week's uh, video if you want to look more into the pardes, where this is the, the simple, this is the hint, this is the um, uh, um, drash, the... Uh, sod. No, not sod. Uh, I'm looking at the Dalit for drash, which is translated as seeking the meaning out of the text, like midrash. And then sod, which is the secret. Um, all right. It's begadav, his garment. Velavash begadim acherim, and he shall wear other garments. Vehotzi, what's the root of vehotzi? Hutz. Anyone? Hutz. Hey, vav, tzadi. Tzadi. Very good. It's it, it's originally Vav Tzadi Aleph, which we know better as Yod Tzadi Aleph, Yatsa to go out. And that original Vav was preserved here in the form of a vowel. Why is it a vowel? Because Vavs historically were more like vowels than they were consonants. So instead of uh, vehautzi, it turned into vehotzi. 
Um, so this is the causative he feel of Yatsa to go out, uh, and he caused something to go out. He carried forth. Or, sorry, this is Vekatal. And he will or he shall carry forth. Et adesh in the ashes. El mi chutz. Uh, what is this me at the front? From. From. So it's from chutz, from outside of, even though in English that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's referring to out there, uh, further away from us uh, towards the outside. Mi chutz la machane. So from outside of the camp. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the root of machane? Mem and kuf nun. Mem is a preformative. There's no kuf in here. It's a chet. Et. Yes, sorry. Et. I meant. But the mem is a preformative. It's part of the um, pattern of the word. So chet is the wow. first root letter. Yes. Ah, from Hana. Mm. Good. So we, we know this as Hana. Uh, yeah. This is not Hana as in Hannah. That comes from Chen, Grace. Yeah. Root of yes. which is Chet Nun Nun. But here, Chet Nun He, it's actually Chet Nun Yod, is to um, set up camp, to park, to uh, camp. Uh, in modern Hebrew, a store is a hanut. Uh, a um, um, I'm trying to remember the the word for a parking garage. It's a um, ah, it's not hanaya, is it hanaya hanyon? Ah, oh, there are so many different no kanyon. That's a different word. Uh, it's anyway. Hanaya. Hanaya, thank you. So Hanaya is the parking garage. Hanaya, is it Hanaya? All right, I'm happy with that. What does parking have to do with camping? Uh, with stores, campgrounds. Of course, they had campgrounds back then. Yeah, it's because of the. It's actually because of the word camping being the original mm -hmm. and then store and parking actually go hand in hand. Remember if you have goods to yeah. sell, you wheel your cart to the market yeah. and you set up camp, you sell your wares and then you pull your cart and you go home. They didn't have brick and mortar buildings uh, for stores, especially if you're bringing your wares from afar. Mm. Um, so that's why all of these are related. Because you come and you park and you sell your wares. Mm -hmm. El makom, what's the root of makom? Kum. Kum, which means to, uh, raise. to, to rise up. Rise so up. makom is a place that has risen up, has been established. has uh, It's an, uh, kind of an establishment, kind of. There's actually another word in Hebrew for that, but... Um, a machon, but anyway, that's more like an institute. But a makom mm. is a place that has risen up. It was nothing. Now it's risen up, and now it's got a a name and a and a town sticker uh, out front on the welcome sign. And then tahor. What's the opposite of tahor? Tami. Tami. Are those confusing? They both start with yes. Het. How do you remember one instead of the other? This is how I recommend it. Tame. Tame. Contaminate. Tame is the dirty one because you think of the word contaminate, and tahor mm -hmm. is the other one. Yeah. Ironically, if you think of a whore for tahor, it doesn't work out very well. So my apologies. Maybe she's a clean young lady or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to look. Your mind wanders into. Okay, never mind. When you when you're trying to remember vocabulary, the sillier it is, more likely you're going to remember it. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to have uh, eccentric thoughts and try to use those, harness them to remember your vocabulary. Some of the 
weirdest vocabulary that I have trouble remembering. You come up with a silly story, you never forget about it. But for each person, it's going to be a little bit different because everybody has different experiences and knows different languages and know, has different associations. So you know, the ones that work for me may not work for you. Question. Question. The question back to where it was. You said something about the mem being being what? What's um, mem? The mem right here the, and right yeah. here. I called it a preformative. Uh, yeah, what's that? I'm using this word instead of the word prefix because. Uh, oh, okay. So it's it's a it's, it's a uh, what you call it? Um, oh God, I keep forgetting the word. <laughs> the the mem here is part of the pattern of the word, and so I I I resist using the word prefix because the definite article is a prefix. Me is a prefix. Uh, vav and is a prefix. You know, it's like a separate idea that prefixes onto the word. Mem, like this mem and that mem, they're not prefixes. In fact, they are part of a greater uh, system. They are part of the pattern that includes the stuff underneath here. Now, unfortunately, both of these are irregular words. They have weak roots, so... This one doesn't work out because of the vav. This one doesn't work out because of the yod at the end. But if you've ever heard of words like uh, migdal, mm -hmm. that is a, oh, we could go back to mich michnase. There we go. That's a preformative. Mm -hmm. It's part of the pattern of the word. Uh, mizbeach is another one. Yeah. So it's not like the mem is by itself prefixed on, but it's part of a greater uh, process. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, who's our next reader? Angela, are you re going to read? Yes, please. All right, go right ahead. Beha yesh al amis bea beak tu kada te yeah tu tu kad and bo lo Tick beer, kick tick bay, tick bay, tick bay. Ufi er Ale 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 Ya Ako N Ako N Asiv Asim. It seem right, it seem it seem and ba ba bo bokeh ba bekeh penultimate stress ba bokeh ba bokeh yeah, yeah, in the morning, okay, ba it was the same thing, isn't it? Ba ba bekeh ba bekeh, okay, yeah, uh, rack they they are rack. They are rock. Mm -hmm. And I'll lay a. Mm -hmm. Aleha. Aleha. A. Ola. They eat tear. Ale, aleya. Ale bia, ale bi, ale be, ale ve, ale ve, yeah, ve. Ash lamin, lamim, lamim. Ash lamim. Ash lamim. All right, let me read through it real quick. Ve ha esh al hamizbeach tukad bo lo tichbe uvi er aleha. Hakohen Eitzim Baboker Baboker Vearach Aleha Haola Vehiktir Aleha Helve Hashlamim. 
והאש על המזבח and fire on the altar to God. אוי ואבוי, what is going on in this word? We actually had this earlier, didn't we? I didn't, I don't think I stopped on it. Um, let's parse out this verb. Yiktol. Yiktol. And is it Yodkov? Dali. It looks like, yeah. It's probably Yod or uh, uh, yeah. original Vav. Kuf Dalit. Vinyan, person gender number. It could be either could it be she mm. and e? Right, it's either you a man, you or, you a man or she a female, uh -huh. feminine. And if we're talking about haesh, we, it's probably she. So let's go with three fs based on the context. It's probably three fs. Now all we have left is the binyan. We have seven options. Process of elimination. Okay. Is it call? Simple call. Uh, they... I'm asking. I'm not saying. Is it call? No. Is. Uh, da, da, da. No. No. Yes. Call. No. No. <laughs> no. It's not call. Is it Nifo? No, oh, yeah, because that's a strong of the <laughs> Okay, no, is it uh, is it hit pael? I mean, so which one is it? What what has an ooh ah pattern? Who all has a? Uh, it does have an ooh ah pattern. Fair it's enough. A hufal. 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 Good. So the difference between pual and hufal is where the ooh vowel goes. Does it go on the first root letter or before the first root letter? Well, this one, it's a little hard to decide because before. that first root letter and the U vowel have turned into one. So instead of being, instead of being two with a W, cod, well, that, that's hard to pronounce. Two W cod, that fell out of, out of uh, pronunciation and simply two cod. Mm -hmm. But we don't need, we don't get that root letter vav. The vav has turned into a vowel, and so it is. It's hufal, uh, yiktol hufal. Well, hufal. That's going to be our passive causative. So she will be caused to burn. That's a little clunky. So they they just say she shall uh, uh, she the fire shall be burning. Eh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, on him. Who is the him? The altar. The altar. Yeah. Lo tichbe. What's the root of tichbe? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is is that cough? Oh, no, mm -hmm. it. it cough. Cough. Bait. Bait uh -huh. and a. Oh yeah, I am. One. No, no, it's not Ayn. Remember, Ayn is a guttural. I think you mean Yod. I mean Yod. Yod. I mean Yod, not Ayn. Sorry. <laughs> right. So this vowel, hey, at the end is actually a hidden Yod. Sorry yod. about that. Yeah, I meant Yod. Um, I didn't that's mean That's also ayin. going to uh, Yiktol. Uh, what, Binyan? And I... <clears throat> it's still a, y a Yiktol. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, still no, a Yiktol, it... but what, Binyan? Oh, and um, is this one hit player? Mm -hmm. Too easy. Yeah. Is that call? Yeah. Call is the Hebrew word for easy, so it's too easy. Mm -hmm. It's call. Sure. And that chiric is the reason that I know that it's a call. Yish more. Tish more. Right? If that chiric is what mm -hmm. I expect. Yik uh, mm -hmm. It's a yik tol in a call binyan. And can I can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Um, for those for those of us that haven't studied the binyan, haven't gotten the breakdown of the different pual he fells or whatever. Yeah. What's the easy? How would I know that this is a call if I didn't know that those other ones existed? Um. All right. Fair enough. Um. If I didn't know those other ones existed, how would I know it's a call? If you don't know those other ones existed, then you think everything is a call. 
yes, but I'm afraid to answer its call because I don't know if it's the oh. other ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's because of the, the diagnostics you're looking for. So if we take a, like I mentioned, yish more, this is um, this is a kal binyan. We're familiar with it in the yiktol. And we're looking for the pattern to try to diagnose which of the binyanim it is. I know it's a kal because of the chirik. Mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously the Yiktol letter, but also the Shva and also the Cholam, mm -hmm. right? Yiktol. Sometimes we get the Yiktol like we talked about earlier, but the Chirik will still be there. Uh, just to keep things interesting, if that sheen were a guttural, mm -hmm. Chirik won't show up, right? Like... um uh, I don't want to use one that's doubly weak. Let me think of a different one. Oh, yesof. There we go. Yesof. Yesof. So this is a little tricky because we should have expected a chirik here with a shva here and a cholam here. So we got the cholam. Yay! Why don't we get a chirik and a shva here? Because Aleph ain't going to take a shva. So what we learn is that gutturals mess up vowels. Gutturals don't like shva because shva is at the, is, is, chirik and shva are pronounced at the front of the mouth. Gutturals mm -hmm. at the back. So they don't mix. Mm -hmm. So it's going to pull the vowel back into either an e, eh, a, ah, or o. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. So it's a matter of, to answer your question, Amanda, it's a matter of what you expect to be there, mm -hmm. all the while remembering that sometimes you're not going to get to, you know, have your cake and eat it too. You know, you're not going to necessarily get all three of those uh, diagnostic features. Mm -hmm. But the chiric is how I knew that that was a call. And this thing at the end is irregular because of that weak, uh, weak root letter yod. Okay. Uvi er, all right. What binyan is that one? Now that we've been talking about Phyrix. PL. Yeah, nice. I was trying to trip you up and you didn't trip up at all. So this over here was a yiktol, right? Mm -hmm. One over here is not a yiktol. Mm -mm. It's, it's, it's a vekatal. I'll just I'll just say katal for I'll say vek. Well, the point is it's a different suffix conjugation instead of prefix conjugation of course it's suffix is zero because it's three ms mm -hmm. um so that means we're looking for two different diagnostic features depending on if we're looking at yiktol or katal right if i'm looking for a katal verb uh, i'll go back to you amanda suppose i'm looking for a katal verb uh he guarded how would i say he guarded in hebrew she uh, shamar. Oh, Sh shamar. Um, shamar. shamar. Yeah, yes. shamar. So the diagnostic feature for kalbanyan that is in the katal uh, suffix conjugation, completed actions. We're looking for a kamatz. We're looking for a patach. Will you always get it? No. no. Suppose a guttural mm -hmm. gets in the way and messes up the vowels. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, we expect this to be here, and we expected a patah here, but I'll have gotten the way. Um, let me think of another one. Ooh, right? Another example would be like bana. He built. He built. We expect that, Kamatz. But we don't expect that. Well, it's because there's something else going on. Yod turns into a vowel and lengthens to a kamatz. Okay, so we're looking for a kamatz and a patach, even though we won't always get it. This, on the other hand, is a katal of a different binyan, of a PL. PL, because it expects a chirik. And it expects a tzere right there, and it expects a dagesh right there. Do you see the dagesh? I don't see the dagesh. Nope. Oh, because it's a guttural. It's an i. Mm. Gutturals don't take a dagesh, so either the guttural will simply omit the dagesh, 
or in some cases, it'll actually lengthen the preceding vowel. Like in the word berech, berech, he blessed. We would have expected mm -hmm. here, here with a dagesh in the resh. Not going to happen. Lengthens. Uh, uvi er, and he shall kindle or burn or cause to burn, something like that. Aleha, upon her. <gasps> upon her? Who is the her? The, oh, oh. the fire. The fire. Mm, the fire. Yeah, yeah, work backwards and find the feminine singular, and it's right there. Ha'esh. Uh, Hakohen, he's the subject. Etzim, wood. Well, that seems a little oddly placed. Whenever you see an oddly placed noun, it's probably acting like an adverb. With wood, by wood, through the use of wood. Baboker, baboker. Oh, look. These, um, well, I guess there's two things to say. Baboker is technically a preposition tacked onto the word boker or baboker. So in the morning. But then it repeats it. What, did Moses have a stuttering problem? Well, maybe, but yes, that's not did. the point here. <laughs> maybe he did, but that's not the point here. By repeating it twice, it shows um, an iterative action, something you're supposed to do each and every morning, morning by morning. And you can see that's how the translators translated it. Ve'arach, and he shall arrange, right? Like the ma'aracha. Uh, uh, do you all know that word? Yeah. When you have a mem at the front and a hay at the end, it's usually a place, location, mm -hmm. where that root happens. This is translated in, well, depending on who the translator is, as a either a battle line or as a... Um, a battle arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, so battle line, your your rank and file troops, that's your ma'aracha. Also, we have the shulchan aruch, the book that arranges all of um, Jewish praxis, uh, halacha. Uh, it, it tells you how you're supposed to fulfill all the commandments. They did all the hard work. They prepared the table, shulchan aruch, and all you have to do is sit down at it and eat. Shulchan Aruch, mm -hmm. a, a set or arranged table. Uh, and he shall arrange Aleha upon her, the fire, Haola, the ascending whole burnt offering. Vehiktir. What is Ketoret? Ketoret. I mean, ah, oh, it's incense. Ketoret, mm -hmm. isn't it? So here we get that root of turning of, of, of smoke in the heel, causing <laughs> something to smoke. And he shall turn into smoke, Aleha, on the fire, Chelve, the fat or fat portions of Hashlamim. Now, this is just one of the sacrifices. The shalem sacrifice, the what's often called peace offering, or sometimes uh, no, let's just go with that peace offering. I don't think the whole burnt offering has to do with shalem. I mean, shalem means like the whole thing. So I'm wondering if some translations do that, but doesn't matter. We're trying to study the Hebrew. Uh, comments or questions on this verse before we move on? All right, who wants a particularly short verse to read? Who feels a little um, <laughs> anxious? Oh, thank you, Tim. Would you like to read this one so short? Go right ahead. Esh tamayid sukhat alha mizbech lo tichveh. Very good. Uh-huh, tichveh. Very good. Um let me just read through it Esh tamid that right there is your cantillation mark so we can ignore that bit right there we have a here it tamid tukad al hamizbeach lo tichve 
All right. So most of the vocabulary in this verse, we've already seen in preceding verses. So we don't have to worry too much about the vocabulary, but is there anything weird that you all see in this verse? Anything inexplicable? Oh, I just with with we maybe where's the the in the fire where it says where fire. is the the in the fire it's not there it's not there but we were just talking about the fire so in the context it wouldn't make sense to be like the fire the fire the fire and then all of a sudden a fire um maybe it is a fire a fire shall ever be burning on the mizbeach yeah fair enough uh, this is a translator option right there. He thought the sounded better. We just had this verb. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. A week, the guess. So strange. Did they forgot? Did they forget to dot their b? <laughs> Is it because it's at the end of a sentence? I wish I had a good explanation for why there's no Dagesh there. I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not sure that it's at, because it's at the end of the sentence, but because it's at the end of the sentence, that's definitely a good re, a good suspicion to have. Um, what I will also bring up, though, is the fact that the schwa that we get in a yiktol. Um There we go. The schwa that we get in a yiktol, silent or audible? Silent. Silent, right. Because it's in it's a, a short, short, vowel. short vowel. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now watch this. Let's make an imperative out of this. Silent or audible? Audible. Audible. Because hmm. it begins the sentence. Right. And... What I'm tr uh, what I'm trying to get at here is that there is a usually liturgical tradition, but there is a a, a Hebrew tradition um, in Ashkenazi dialect to pronounce the shvaz. So instead of tichve, it would actually be tichve, tichve. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine loves listening to a. Uh, uh, a song that the Keefness, have you all ever seen the Keefness on YouTube? It's hilarious. So what he does is he takes these, these videos that go viral and then he adds uh, music behind it. He sings with it. He adds instruments. He turns it into kind of a, a techno beat. And anyway, uh, he did that for a, for a Jewish song. Is the way they sing it. I'll, I'll say it slower. Im Hashem lo bayis. Now, bayis is just the Ashkenazi way of saying bayith, which we call bayit, house. Mm. But listen to the way that they pronounce yivne. 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 Im Hashem lo bayis. So in that tradition, that shva is not silent. It's in the Sephardic tradition, in the modern Hebrew tradition, that it's a silent shva. So what we're looking at here is probably evidence that it used to be a little bit different. So, Mike, by accident, I pronounced the Sephardic version as opposed to the Ashkenazi version by not pronouncing that S at the end. The if, <laughs> if there's no S, what do you mean? Uh, right. The tich, If you say Tich, tich bay, What's that? You no, know, there's no, no, it's not the yes. I was just talking about uh, bayis in oh, the okay. Ashkenazi tradition. Bayit has a tav with no dot in it. In Sephardic tradition, tav with or without a dot, it's pronounced the same. But in Ashkenazi, tav with a dot is t, and without it is s. Why? Because Germans can't pronounce th. No offense, Thomas. Hmm. What do you think about that? Right? How many of your friends would say, what do you think about that? 
instead of how, yeah. what do you think about that? I mean, it's, I, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. It's just the way it is. There are certain people who can't pronounce certain sounds and the Ashkenazi dialect comes from Europe. So there's a good chance mm -hmm. that what was originally th turned into sa, bayis. Um, but that's the word for house. I was pointing out that instead of uh, uh, tich be with a weak to guess right there, it might have been tich mm. with an audible schwa. Or, or at least what's called a medium schwa. And in most curricula, they teach that there are two kinds of schwa, audible and silent. I'm sorry, that's not true. There's a, there's a third category called medium schwa, which is stuck somewhere in the middle. This is a medium schwa. In yiktol, it's a silent. But in the imperative, it's audible. So which one is it? Mm -hmm. It's because schwa used to always be pronounced the same way. There weren't cat two different categories or three different categories of schwa. They all used to be pronounced the same way with a very, very short little vowel. Only later did we, it's about probably about the 1400s where we start talking about silent versus audible schwa. So now we have two kinds. Yeah, it's anachronistic. That's not the way it originally was. Um, who would like to read next? I've got a few people with the hands up. Dina, this is a short no, verse. So you need a I have verse. a question. I, I oh, don't want to read. I just have a question about the previous verb, verse. Uh huh. The last verb. Uh, sorry. Why is it not hufal uh, like the previous verb? This one here? Like, why is the last one? Not in a hufal like the ah, previous right. one. Right. Why isn't this one in a hufal yeah. uh, like that one was? Um, it has to do with the, well, I'll, what I'll say is not hufal, is hufal. Okay. It has to do with the root. Um, the root, vav kuf dalit, has to do with burning. <laughs> as kaf bet yod has to do with extinguishing, uh, the act of extinguishing something. Or um, go, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good English translation. Um, all I can think of is a passive, not snuff, not extinguish, quench, maybe quench. So, quench. so it's like there we already, go. it's already quench. kind of in a passive form. Well, no, no, no. See, that's what I'm trying to avoid is that no, even quenches. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with an intransitive active verb. And I can't think of one in English that represents the action of a fire going out. Oh, well, let's just do that. Don't blow out. <laughs> going out. Exactly. Going out. The uh, oh, blow, blow out. Yeah, something like that. Um, so it is active, it is intransitive, it is going out. Um but it's not it's not technically a passive. It has to do with the the root. That's why it's not a hufal. It's not the act of someone putting it out. It's the fact that someone is not tending mm -hmm. the fire and then it goes out on all its own or all on its own. So would will be better than shall for the translation? Oh, that bring that opens up another can of worms. Yeah. Shall is something that is going to happen no matter what you want. Whereas will is something you desire to do, or at least historically in Middle English, that's what the difference was. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. shall has turned into language of the law. So now it's like, thou shalt keep it going. Thou shalt not let it go out. Like one of the Ten Commandments or something. Well, historically, I like the word shall. I will eat cake, but I right. shall do my homework. That's how it was originally used. This is what I want, but this is what's going to happen. And then that turned into... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Angela. In, no, in English, if you say the fire will go out, that sounds better than shall go out. And it's just because of all the changes that have taken place in English. So if you want, if it sounds better, then go for it. If, you're, uh, if your audience will better understand it as will go out instead of shall go out, go for it. Even though it's technically an error by older standards. Um, yeah, that's the beauty of languages. They're constantly changing. <laughs>
Who's going to read next? Uh, let's see, Amanda, you have your hand up. Do you want to read this? Um, I think Thomas was first. Oh, okay, uh, Thomas, go ahead. I can wait. I can wait. Uh, of course you can, but she said go okay. ahead. Okay, okay, <clears throat> okay. Um, Bezot Torat Hamin Ha Hagrev Otar Bene Aharon Lifne Adonai El Bene Perfect. Vezot Torah Mincha. This is the law or instruction, really. The instruction of the Mincha, the grain offering. Uh, what's the root of Torah? Yara, Yot Reshi. I would say Yot Reshi, but what does it mean? That mean uh, the first you can use as. Um, to shut or to throw, I don't know. Shoot. And, uh, Shoot. Yeah. It's in in gym. And the next one to teach, I think. What does shooting an arrow have to yeah. do with teaching? Make, making a mark. Mm. It's very interesting. This aiming is, it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the word Torah. Is Target. a noun which, how do I say this? Which might be relate, how do, I, how do I say this? It's a noun that has the flavor of a hethiel verb. Okay. The reason I know this is from the verb to instruct, it's a hethiel. Uh, horot or lehorot. Mm -hmm. That hey is hethiel. So causing yara, causing to shoot, what? Really? Yeah. It's, it's the idea of someone causing, helping, assisting someone to aim and fire their, um, their withal in the right direction. Yeah. Wow. When I teach my son to do a job, he's got energy power volition willpower he can go out and do anything he wants but when i teach him to harness it and do it this way this direction i'm teaching him to shoot hopefully teaching him to shoot straight and now he's going to go and do it absent of my volition anymore that's the connection you teach someone to shoot straight and then they go and do whatever it is that you've taught them it's instruction and it's related to causing someone to shoot, uh, for example, an arrow. Um, I think that's the meaning of Methuselah. I, mm -hmm. It's I the learned, meaning of uh, what? Methuselah. Okay. I the beginning of Methuselah? That's I, think that's the meaning. I think that's the meaning of the name. No, 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 no. Methuselah. Um, I don't know if there's a vav there. I want to put one there, but I don't know if it's going to be there. So metu, uh, I don't know how to spell metu shelach's name. I'm just going to put it like this: metu shelach. Uh, metu is methu, which is moto, his met, his death, and shelach. Is oh. that is being sent so it will not happen until his death his death will send or bring about something and so his name has to do with his death will bring about the flood uh thomas you were asking a question uh, yes uh, no, no i learned in the vocabulary derech is from darach and that means uh, to Oh, I don't know the word. Trod, to tramp, a bow, yeah. To spin a bow. And when uh, sin is when we missed a uh, goal. Missed the mark. And that right. this direction Torah is so beautiful language to understand what God means. I need, I need to ask I for clarification for David. Words. Yep. Okay, the Father, God say, I will help you with my word. Follow me. That's a life for you. For every step you go. It's beautiful. There are places in the yeah. Bible where somebody Wonderful. can shoot at a hare and not miss. The word for not miss 
I believe mm -hmm. is uh, I forget what binyan it is. I think it's hefeel. But anyway, it's this root right here. So that whole idea about sin is when you miss the mark. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. It's used that way in the Bible. Um, derech. You said derech meant something I wasn't 100% sure about. Derech. Comes derech, from... derech the verb. The verb I know. I know. Means to. Means to trod. To walk. To, 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 to bend. Or to thread. Uh, I don't know the word. To oh to uh to bend back a bow, yeah 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 yes 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 a bow a bow sorry, okay you're not thinking yeah. of kashat. I read that in the German translation from the Hebrew word. Do you remember what verse it was in? You oh, spiked my curiosity. If you can find oh, it, let me know. Yeah, wait I'll, I'll give you a minute. All right, any other comments or questions on this before we move it to the next verse? All right, and the next one's a little bit of a, a little bit of a doozy. Amanda, you up for the challenge? Yes. Yalla. <laughs> Means go ahead. mimenu be kum be kum zo mislet hamine hamincha umish mena manach. The et call hal halevona asher al hamin hamin ha ve hik ve hamizbeach ruach a reach ni hocha as as karata. La donai. Mm -hmm. Good. Let me read through one time. Veherim mimenu bekumzo misolet hamincha u mishamnach ve et kol halevona asher al hamincha ve hiktir hamizbeh, excuse me, hamizbeh, reach nichoach as karatah la donai. Um, we talked about Veherim. We talked about Hamincha. Et kol al mincha hektir mizbeach. Eh, Adonai. We love Adonai. Okay, so the things I have not underlined are things that we have not uh, share, uh, have not talked about. Mimenu means forever. Forever. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> well, okay, so we do have a translation right underneath. Right, the translation is underneath there to help guide us in the right direction. Uh, from, what looking, what's that? From in the midst of it or something like that? Yeah, what we're looking at is a reduplication of the word min. From. Min, min, who? Min, min, who? The noon assimilates as a dagesh. The hey back assimilates as a dagesh, and we get mimenu, who is a three ms. Alternatively, we could have also had nun shuruk, which is one cp us. So it could be from him or from us. From us doesn't make sense in the context, so we're going to reject that one. He shall take from it, from him, bekumtso. Uh, Comets, I believe, is the. This is some. This is the same root as kamats, I guess. Like the the word kamats, the vow, the vowel. Where's a kamats? Where's a kamats? Right there. Is this right here? Uh, but a comets is a, a just a, in the palm of your hand. A, 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 um, actually, no. Rabbinically, it's different. A comets, I believe, is when you take like two two or three fingers worth of something it's not a handful Urgh. anyway rabbinic tradition stuff um so basically he's taking from misolet from the solet the fine flour finely ground flour as opposed to that you know wheat berries or coarse stuff that you fix for your family no this is the good stuff you're giving to god and hamincha of the grain offering 
umishamna. What's the root of mishamna? Shemen. Shemen, of course. Why is there a patach? Because it's original, right? Melech turns into Malko. Shemen turns into Shamna. Umi uh, Shamna. And from, how do I know that's the word from? Because the Dogish is in the Shin. You all are too smart. Ve'et kol halivona, which is frankincense. Asher al hamincha, which is on the the grain offering. Ve'hiktir amizbeach, reach nichroach. We all, in fact, you when you read this, you read it as ruach because that's a word we're very familiar with. Is it related to this? No. Yes. Yes. Yes, Remember, okay. ruach originally is either wind or breath. And it isn't until later on that theology decides that there's this thing called a spirit and everything that entails. Remember, the the original meaning of the word was rather concrete. Well, I realize the irony there because wind is not concrete, but never mind. It's something that has a, a, a an observable meaning. So reach is related to ruach absolutely it's a it's a Ooh. smell it's so a going out. Yeah. It's not good. i wouldn't i wouldn't say savor but whatever it's it is a savor but <clears throat> nichoach sweet is not nichoach is not sweet <clears throat> it's um oy vavoy. what is it a oh man i can't believe it i'm on the spot and i can't remember exactly what nichoach is can someone help me out a delight, something pleasant or restful. Yeah, pleasant is what I was gonna say. Um, yeah, something like a like a pleasant smell. Uh, so it be pleasant mm -hmm. aroma. Yeah, so this would be like the pleasant. Ah. And that would be the aroma. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Azkarata it comes from the root what? Zahar. Zahar. So it's a it's a memorial, like a remembering something of her, belonging to her, to the Lord. Sweet. All right. Comments or questions? Um, I was hoping that we might be able to get a little something out of uh, Isaiah 53. Do you all have any interest in that? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Resurrection Day. <laughs> Yes. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. Because it's uh, now now to be clear. Mm -hmm. Resurrection Day happened during Passover and Passover is in one month. But mm -hmm. according to the English calendar, can I, no, can I say something? Roman, Gregorian calendar. Because because our our so our Pesach or our like Passover week is actually in a month and we're following another calendar. So. It is sort of what I believe in is it is sort of in a month. <laughs> so uh, what I was going to say is that uh, Easter is this weekend. There was a huge right. debate early on in church history about whether the resurrection should be celebrated near Passover or whether it should be at the, what do you call it? The vernal equinox. But, is that but sometimes no, it. Sometimes I think every few years, all the churches they celebrate together during exactly. Passover. Exactly. So the the two coincide on occasion, but mm. they can be up to a month apart. And in this year, they're a month apart. Um, so I'm not trying to step on any toes here, but the whole idea probably originally came from the pagan Roman holiday to celebrate the the fertility goddesses in the Roman pantheon was strangely amalgamated into this new Christian religion, which came out of Jude Judaism. Mm -hmm. And it was easier to follow the vernal equinox than it was to follow the Jewish calendar. So that's where we get Easter from. Um, you know, I went to uh, there was a there was a church in my local, you know, close to where I live that put on a Passover Seder. And I'm like, oh, yeah. We're going to have it on the day before Easter. I'm like, oh, great. And of course, the kiddos got to 
uh, you know, find Easter eggs and all this stuff. And I'm like, where's that in the Bible? What does that have to do with resurrection? What is that? Uh, what, what does that have to do with price of tea in China? Um, so just to clarify, Passover is in a month. And that would have been the time, remember, according to the New Testament, mm-hmm. it was during Passover that the crucifixion and resurrection happened. But I digress. And I wanted to touch on Isaiah 53 because it uh, the, it's the so-called forbidden chapter in Judaism because it speaks too um, clearly of the life of Yeshua. So a lot of rabbis say, you know what, let's just not read it. Oh, so do you have this this chapter in, in the Hebrew Bible then? Of course. It's oh. just that you're you're not usually going to get a Dval Torah or a, or a Midrash or a, a, a Drash. You're not going to get any kind of uh, um, teaching on it, wow. except that it follows Rashi's opinion. And Rashi says it's referring to Israel. It's not referring to the Messiah. The problem with that. The problem with that is that three times the verses in Isaiah 53 show up in the Midrash Rabbah, which was written before Rashi. Mm -hmm. And of them, two of them tell us they are messianic. Only the third one says that it's it's representing Israel. So predating Rashi, it was messianic. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it considered messianic today? Because it fits too well to Christian theology. Anyway, yeah, if you can't uh, if you can't defend it, you just uh, pretend like it doesn't exist, right? Uh, all right, let's see. What verse should we jump to? Any suggestions? Um, and and a bit further than that one. Um, I'll tell you when. Oh, uh, yeah. No, sorry. All right, go go a bit further. Yeah. From, sorry, from the verse above. Is it number five? Yeah. This one? All yeah, right. Yeah. All right. I mean, Who? it's if everybody wants, uh, you know. What does uh, everyone want? What yes. does everybody want? Everyone's saying yes. Here we go. Vehu uh, This is a pu'al. Um, Wait a second. Mecholal. What am I saying? Mecholal. It's a mecho. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a polel. Uh, excuse me, a polal, uh, pu'al. Clear that. Did I just, ah, did I just do something silly? I did. Vehu yeah. mecholal, and he was, they'd have here, wounded. Mi from our pesha, from our transgressions. Mi duka, or sorry, mi um, like dikayon, depression. So mi means pu'al, he was bruised. Me avonoteinu, from our avonot, from our iniquities. Musar, um, shlomenu. Uh, musar, they're, tra- they're translating it as chastisement. Uh, it could be discipline. Uh, shlomenu, for our peace or of our peace. Alav, upon him. Uvachavurato. Um, I wonder if that has to do with binding, I think. Uh, so here they're talking about the, the wounds, the things that are bound up, maybe. Uh, nirpa, we will be, or we are, Rafa, healed. Lanu. Yeah. No, no, nirpa, they are healed. What am I saying? This is a nifal. Uh, they are healed for us. Kulanu, which is kol with a new suffix. All of mm-hmm. us, katzon, like the sheep, uh, sheep or flocks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ta'inu, uh, ta uh, from ta'a mm-hmm. to make a mistake or to go astray. We strayed. Ish ledarko, every man to his own derech way. Paninu. He has, uh, we have turned so the root. The root here is pana to turn your face, to go a different direction. The root is pay nun yod. Paninu, we turned. Vadonai and the Lord, hifgia, um, 
nifga, well, paga means to either touch or strike. So hifgia means cause to touch or strike. Bo. Mm -hmm. In him or at him. Et ava. I feel like that should be a kamatskatan, but I'm not 100% certain. Certain. I would have expected this to be avon kulan. Avon. Avon. The way it's written is avon, but it probably should have been avon. I don't know. Uh, kulano, the iniquity of all of us. Uh, nigas? Wait a second. I'm not familiar with that one. Oppressed? I mean, that's, yeah, that's what, that's what it's being translated as. So I want to know. Uh, yes. Nagas to drive such as an animal or to tax or harass or tyrannize. Ugh. Okay, Nigas, he was Nifal, he was oppressed. The who Na'ane. And he was. Yeah, it looks like um it the way it's being translated, it comes from La Anot to afflict. But it just looks like a noon nifal is being used for a basically to afflict shouldn't be in the nifal. So what could this be if not a nifal? Not a nay. We no. Anyway, it's being translated as he was afflicted. Oh, by the way, anytime you have questions about the Hebrew translation, you can always go back and look at the Septuagint. And say, well, what did they think two thousand years ago? Right, and get a pretty good idea of how it was translated back then, and that's part of the reason why translations will translate certain words the way they do. Velo yiftach, and he did not open his mouth. Kase, like the lamb. Latevach. Um, this is the slaughter, uh, okay. like a like a mitbach is a kitchen. It comes from this root because that's where the mm -hmm. butcher operated in the kitchen. So to the tevach, to the slaughter, yuval. Lehovil is to cause someone to go a certain direction. Yuval, he was uh, led. Uchrachel. This is an interesting bit right here. Most people don't know that Rachel, her name is a ulam. Uh, a ulam. Yeah. Lamb, yeah. I knew that. <laughs> and yeah. like the ewe lamb, or like a ewe lamb, lifne gozezeha, gozez is a shear, a shearer, so before her shearers, ne'elama, um, this is with an aleph, it's not ein lamed mem alam, but rather aleph lamed mem, uh, they translate it as silent says here to be tongue tied or to tie fast okay so maybe tongue tied dumb quiet silent velo yiftach piv and he opened not his mouth and he did not open his mouth now this is a yiktol but if this is prophetic then that means it can be pointing to the future and uh be translated uh, uh, translate it somehow else he will not open his mouth versus he opened not his mouth. Now, my guess is that the translator is a uh, Christian here. And if so, then he's looking back to Yeshua. He did not open his mouth. Even though it's a yiktol in the, in the verse. Um, let's see. Me otzer. Umi mishpat lukach. So they have here from the uh, closing. Okay. Yeah, I would have, I would have translated that somehow else. In modern Hebrew, otzer is a uh, is a treasure, a, mm. you know, storing things mm. up. But here, me otzer, they're translating it as a, a closure in the sense of oppression or prison. Umi mishpat. Lukach and from justice, justice he was taken. The et doro and his generation, mi yisocheach. A sicha is a, a con in modern Hebrew, a sicha is a conversation, but socheach in like in the Psalms is usually something like, um, 
uh, pouring out your heart kind of a conversation, not just like, hey, chat buddies, what's going on? Uh, so here, who can consider or discuss or even you might even consider using words like lament because it's usually going to be some sort of uh, agitated or, or frustrated conversations like, oh, man, what's going on? Ki nigzal. Gzira is is something that's cut away. In modern Hebrew, if you cut with scissors, you would say gazar. Nigzar, he was cut off. Me'eretz hayim, from the land of the living. Mipesha'ami, from the transgression of my people. Negalamo. Nega is a... a plague or a, here they have a stroke or striking uh, lamo is lahem but probably an older form of it to mm -hmm. them or them here they translate it as to him interesting shouldn't there are places in the psalms where it's translated for them to them so why it's him right here i'm not sure maybe theology Um, Vaiten et Reshaim Kivro, and he uh, was put. He, no, no, Vaiten, 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 it's a Yiktol. Yeah, and he put or placed et Reshaim, the wicked. Kivro in his grave. So I guess his grave with the wicked somebody put his grave with the wicked the et ashir and the rich bemotav mot death in his death sure. odd that there's a yod right there um motav that should actually be plural mm -hmm. allo hamas uh upon no violence, violence. asa so this is they, they, here they say although, even though it's really like concerning or upon no violence he did velo mirma. Uh, Let's see. Do you all remember the waters of Mary Ma? No, that's, oh, yeah, the that's Meriva. Mara. That's Meriva. That's a different word. Uh, Merim is to uh, to uh, what do they have here? Not deceit, like a like an uprising. Merima. Anyway, so here they translate it as deceit. Merima, befeev, there was no deceit in his mouth. Vadonai hafetz, dako. We saw earlier the verb daka or dacha, which is to pressure, press, crush, bruise. And here it says, and the Lord hafetz, delighted, pleased, dako, his crushing hecheli im tasim asham nafsho to cause holy to cause sickness um im tasim if tasim they have he should put even though it's tasim ah nafsho if she should put asham guilt who his soul, his nefesh. Yir'e, mm -hmm. sorry, there's too many things popping up. Yir'e zera, uh, he shall see seed. Ya'arich yamim, uh, shall be lengthened, his days shall be lengthened. Vechef, wait a second, vechefetz, and desire. Adonai, the desire of the Lord, the will of the Lord, biyado in his hand, yitzlach. Bahatzlacha means with success. Yitzlach will succeed. Me'amal nafsho yir'e yisba. Bedato yatzdik. Tzadik avdi l'arabim va'avonotam hu yisbol. 
uh, from the, what is that? Amal is like the work, produce. Is that what they're translating as fruit? Amal, mm -hmm. amal. Okay, I guess they're translating as travail. From the travailing of his soul. Let me look that up real quick. Amal. Where, yeah, okay, wearing F, okay, wearing effort, worry with Mali. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Amal, I think of like laboring and toiling. So to, to have travail there uh, caught me off guard. Okay, so from the travail of his nefesh, Yir'e, he will see. Yisba, from uh, Sava, to be sated. Badato, um, it looks like da, like yada, knowledge. What is it saying here? It's oh, knowledge. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Okay, so I got it. So there should be a comma right there because there's a, a zakef katon. Um, but dato, the rivia is all, another uh, disjuncting cantillation mark. So he shall be fully satisfied is one sentence. Um, yatzadik tzadik. The righteous one. Oh, I see what they're doing here. By his knowledge, the righteous one. The righteous one will be made righteous. Isn't uh, Sedek? Isn't Sedek the code word for the branch mm -hmm. in the Old Testament? No, that's uh, se, uh well, se, you, you might be thinking of uh, not Semer. What am I trying to think of? Um, Netzer. Netzer is the branch. Netzer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another, there's another word for branch and I'm not remembering it right now. Uh, I can't remember. Sorry. Avdi, my servant, la rabim, for the many, for the multitude. Va avonote, uh, va avonotam, and their avonot, iniquities, hu yisbol. He, remember, sabal is to bear. So Yisbol, he will bear. I think that's the last verse right here. Lachen yes. achalek lo varabim ve'et atzumim yichalek shalal ta chatasher he'era lamavet nafsho ve'et posheim nimna Vehu Vega Chet Rabim Nasa Vela Poshim Yafgia. All right, so that's a little bit harder to translate. We're going to have to heavily use our uh, translation as a guide here. Where's the minimize? Not minimize, make smaller. Try to get the whole verse in here. I'll scooch it over just a bit. Eh, nope, still can't see it. Come on technology right <laughs> am i right <laughs> because of this or therefore i will divide um for him to him with, with or among the many that here they say great great and those are the atsum the 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 Another word used in the Exodus for how great Israel was. We get Rabim, Atsum, and there's one other word. Uh, so this also has to do with powerful, strong, many, mighty. Yichalek Shalal, he shall divide the spoil. Tachatasher, underneath that, which is like, because, you know, for the reason that. He'era. Lamavet nafsho. Here it's yeah. He poured out heera. I'm not familiar with that one. Are you all? Uh, to make bare, to make empty, to demolish. Okay, so heera lamavet nafsho. His soul to, unto death was poured out empty. Veet poshaim nimna, and with the transgressors he was uh, counted mana. Nasa. So he bore the sin of many. 
Vilaposheim and to the transgressors, those transgressing, Yafgia. Uh, he was caused to touch or strike or come near. So here they say made intercession for those transgress those transgressors. It's like when you're in court and your uh, your counselor finally shows up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, whoo. All right. Well, that's uh, that's the entirety of the rest of the chapter. I hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next week. If anyone enjoys these kinds of lessons, uh, please consider supporting the cause. And I will see you all next time. Thank you. Next week, same time, uh, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Lehitrot shalom. Lehitrot. 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 Lehitrot.